quickly introduce you to cloning because that is what allows a lot of these effects to happen without having to redraw the effect every single time you update your object. So to explain, I have a master here that is my original sprite. And if I update the position of an element in the master, then you can see that my pink sprite as well as my embossed shadow and my embossed highlight all update themselves. So this is super handy because it means you can go make adjustments to your sprites without having to redo all of your work. We're not going to cover what's involved in this embossed effect today because that involves some more complexity, but we will go talk about how to make a glowing or shadow effect behind your sprite. And you can take that and do whatever you want with it. So we'll lock this up. I have created a player copy here that has just the shape of my original sprite and we are going to do some things to clone it. So first I'm going to add a layer that will be my body layer for it. And I want the body layer to be below the master so that we can see the master. Perfect. Now I'm going to clone the master and that is with option or or option or alt D. So I've created a clone there. I'm going to right click on it and push move to layer and I'm going to move it to the layer body. Now I'm going to make the master not visible and you can now see the body of the clone. Now if I want to change the coloring on this body, if I go down here, you'll note that I cannot change the coloring on it. So what we need to do is go back up to our master, lock this up, and I need to select this, I need to go to fill in stroke, and I need to unset the fill or the stroke and the fill. And that's that question mark there. It says that the paint for my original is undefined, which means that I can now go set it for any clones. So if I go back to my layers, lock that back up, you'll see that my body is now red. So whatever we do now to our master, we should also be doing to our body, as you can see. Now, depending on your settings, moving something in the master may or may not affect whether or not that same thing moves in the body. As you can see here, it had no effect for mine. The way you change that is you go up to our preferences and you can move original clones and link to offset, move in parallel, stay unmoved, or move according to the transform. So sometimes it's convenient to have them move in parallel and sometimes it's convenient to have them stay unmoved. Right now we want it to move in parallel. And so if I move this down now, you'll see that my body moved down as well. Now, the reason you might not want it to move in parallel is if I unlock this. Now, if I want to grab everything and move it over to make a copy, you will note, well, actually it didn't do it this time. Sometimes when you do this, when you're making duplicates and such, 
and you move them, um, there's a little bit of a race condition that happens where the master moves and then the body moves after it because they both know that you wanted them to move by an inch. So the master moves by an inch, the body moves by an inch, and then the body realizes that the master has moved by an inch, and so it moves an extra inch out of the way. Um, and I believe that's a race condition. There's other times where you want that sort of thing to happen, um, but it happens a lot of times when you wouldn't expect it. So I'm going to undo all of that. And now we're going to create our shadow effect by locking up our body, adding a shadow, and then moving that shadow underneath the body, taking the master, cloning it with Alt or Option D, moving that to shadow. There we go. Turn that on and off. Shadow is working. And now what I want to do with shadow is I want to keep it black, but I'm going to add a blur to my whole shadow layer. And as you can see, that creates a blur around your player. You can do the same thing with white and create it as a highlight. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't have a background on here, so you wouldn't be able to see it. But either way, it makes a nice way for your player to pop off the screen a little bit. Um, and you can also export this in Inkscape. I mean, export this to Godot as a separate layer so that you can turn on and off the, sh the shadow or do various things like that within the actual player scene.